is entitled on the mark. I am in my full glory on the WKOK OTM webcam. As opposed to your half glory or three quarters <laughs> glory or what? I don't know. It's just a good day. Yeah, you you look so happy. Well, I'm it's full glory guy. because I'm here with you guys this that's, morning. That's that exactly right. Absolutely, yeah. Fred Keller, one of Wait a minute. We have a politician here, and you're in full glory. Now, I'm I'm going to balance that well, one. Well, hold it then. Uh, <laughs> I, I guess politician comes with the territory. However, I'm I'm just a regular citizen that people have chosen to represent them in Harrisburg. Let's uh, let's right. talk about that way. You are okay. A, a representative in every sense of the word. A I, a fine representative. I, I disagree with Fred about so many things, but what? I would vote for Fred in a minute because he represents the area well. I can't dis- I can't agree with everybody. Well, well, Stan, I don't think any two people agree with, with, with something 100% of the time. No. no. I, you know, I, we used to have a saying, if you, if you agree with somebody 100% of the time, then only one person's thinking. So, you know. <laughs> well, both of us apparently you're thinking <laughs> then when we get together we just we just really must think a lot yeah yeah we must because we have great discussions fred and i and we're going to have a great discussion with him this morning we'll talk but, about pensions yeah that, that's one of the things i think we discussed on uh, when mark had contacted me other issues as well the uh, state has a few things going around right now elections and stuff like that all right, you two done? No. Thank you and good night, everybody. That was, <laughs> that was the Fred and Than show for another day. Well, you know, we could, you know, it's on the mark. We thought we'd just talk about things that are right out front there and right, get, busy. get it out in the way. Yeah, Than and I don't agree on everything. I know that to be true. So we don't. There's Do a, we more a myth about that? Do we, Do we agree? agree? Um, no, we don't agree on everything. We agree on some things. Okay. I think that's the way it is most of the time. I think, I think that's what it's all about is uh, we agree sometimes or I, some I, of the time. I think, you know, whenever you're looking at, at somebody that's a representative, there's there's a time they're going to, they're gonna you're going to be in the group that's in the majority, and there's a time you're not going to be in the group that's in the majority, and that's what our government's about, and it's listening and, and talking and debating the issues. I don't really belong to any organized political party. I'm a Democrat. So you're not organized. That, no, that's just, an old <laughs> statement done by, I think... Uh, it's probably W.C. Fields or something. No, no, no. It was the uh, cowboy... I can't... Tom Mitt? Um, uh, no, I know who you're talking about. Roy Rogers. Probably. Not Sounds Roy like Rogers. Mark Twain. No, no, no. The philosopher. Oh. Doggone it. Ah, come on. Well, go ahead. Why don't you tell us who's sponsoring this program? Where we, I who's, don't know who's anything. Who's paying for our babble yes. here today? <laughs> who's, who's, who's so lucky to pay for the babble? The babble fee has been brought to you by the Sunbury Motor Company, family-owned dealership since 1915, 4th Street, Sunbury, and Routes 11 and 15, almost Wharf. They want you to know what they do there at those two locations. That's where they sell the Ford, Hyundai, Kia, and Lincoln cars and trucks, their premier service provider, too, for all makes of cars and trucks, no matter what size vehicle or type it is. If it's busted, to bring it in there, they'll fix it. They've even fixed a few motorcycles uh, lately, and they can fix all sizes of trucks, whether it's a tiny little smart truck, if there is such a thing, all the way up to a great big uh, 21-wheeler. They can fix it, and uh, it would be a 22-wheeler, but one of them is flat, and so you take it to the Sunbury Motor Company, and they can change that tire for you. All sizes of uh, trucks. They they fix. They're a master towing service, and guess what? They don't damage any vehicles they tow. Everybody gets rollback treatment anymore. They don't have any hooks uh, for cars anyway. Uh, everything is a rollback, and they you literal, literally wear soft gloves to handle your car when they are towing it because of an issue. Then they fix it and give it back to you, sometimes delivering it to the precise spot where it was busted, and that is just one of the many services of so the Sunbury Motor Company. They'd love to help you out. SunburyMotors.com. A Lenape Solar email in basket is open. You email on the mark at WKOK.com. We'll read your email on the radio. Lenape, 140 South 2nd Street, Sunbury. Find them on the web at LenapeSolar.com. Call them, 286-1496. Visit them on 2nd Street, the old Agway building, and the old Hajoka Plumbing building, and now Lenape's there for good. And they have got a solar array display set up for you. See what the sun can do by way of generating heat or electricity that you can utilize in a positive fashion at your home or business. Lenape Solar. Dot com. The uh, webcam is up and running. You simply go to WKOK.com and click right on it. The Ustream is the banner that uh, you click on, and you get one of their quick Ustream messages that you have to approve, of course. And then you'll be able to watch the show. That also, that precise link also serves as a 24-hour archive until we overwrite it. But 
you are welcome to go to the WKOK YouTube channel. And the way that you do that is you go to WKOK.com and uh, where it says click here for the YouTube channel, click there. Okay. And that's it. All right. That's where I was confused. I clipped, clicked over there. And then you are on. Was Will Rogers the person? Yeah, that's yeah. who I was trying to think of. Thank you, Margaret. I, I, I got it half right. I got the Rogers kind of that's thing. That's right. You Roy did. Rogers. You said Roy Rogers. Roy Rogers. Boy, that should have that should have sparked my memory. Okay. And uh, let's see. Who's in the room? We'll start with me. Subpar host of the show, but very eager to be here. Beat working, I'll tell you. And I'm always glad when I get an opportunity to talk into a microphone. On the other side of the glass is Kevin Herr, the greatest play-by-play artist the world will ever know, has won so many awards that... Uh, some are even being injected into wells in Ohio because they'll put up with that kind of crap. So he is uh, just one of the folks that is a super winner of many, many awards for his great play-by-play. Across from me. <laughs> I, I don't know what I would say following put up with that crap. But the, the teacher <laughs> from... <laughs> Turtleville, 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 the uh, windbag from Winfield. Oh, uh, I wouldn't say that. Uh, the guy who probably irritates more people than most on this program, because I do think we have a conservative area here. I respect that, but I'm a progressive. And he is a Democrat uh, registered, as he mentioned, and Mitchell is here. Decades of uh, damage-free experience in radio and broadcasting and sales and microphone and even selling, uh, making sure that people had, what, Iron City beer for Iron a City beer for right. a couple of, for about nine months one wow. time when I finally got tired of the office. Do you know? have any of the commemorative 1979 Pirates World Series cans? I have seen them, <laughs> but no, I don't. Right. I, I understand that they are particularly delicious if you don't open them. Yeah, that's the unfortunate thing. I bought a few off eBay and someone drained the... The, the tab's still in place at the top, but somebody drained the beer out of the inside, so it's not worth as much. I was very well, disappointed. That's not good. Yeah, I, I think that's often done uh, because it's the can that's important. And I drank some Iron City in my day, and the beer's not nearly as important as the can at this point. And to your immediate right and to the right of you with political viewpoints is Fred Keller, State Representative, 85th District, registered Republican, Baptist. Am I guessing correctly? Mm. Uh, actually, uh, uh, Protestant UCC is my church that UCC, I attend. UCC, okay. And Middle Creek Township, I know I'm wrong. Yeah, there. Middle, oh, Middle, right. Middle Creek Township, wow. Snyder County, uh, the village of Kramer actually is uh, where I live. Okay, ultra informed on things that relate to Conestoga Wood Products, having worked there for 25 oh. years. So we did turn to Fred when uh, there was the uh, big Conestoga Supreme Court decision that related to birth control and Obamacare and uh, freedom of uh, certain corporations to uh, make sure that the religious, closely held religious beliefs could be transferred to sort of day-to-day decision-making when it came to employee benefits. So we appreciated your words uh, when that came up. A man who is in Harrisburg, precisely what he said he would be four years ago, and represent in the views of folks here, but also making sure that his personal viewpoints are used to inform his votes. How about that? Well, personal viewpoints, uh, you know, looking at this and and what what I talked about four years ago was, you know, taking our values to Harrisburg, you know, listening to people, doing the research, uh, you know, making sure that we look at all the legislation and how it impacts us and, and, you know, working hard to make sure that Harrisburg understands what's important to us here in central Pennsylvania. And while, while we were talking earlier, and I mentioned that, you know, sometimes, I'll, you know, there will be a vote that goes one way and, you know, people will be in the majority on that and then another vote they may not be. And that's, that's our representative government. Sometimes, sometimes we, th- this group agrees on something and the other group agrees on it. And well, you know, I, you just brought up something that's kind of interesting. You said you wanted to take the view of this area into Harrisburg. I think Harrisburg is often quite influenced by the two big cities, maybe three, but Philadelphia, uh, Pittsburgh, and maybe scranton wilkes area. Uh, do you bring enough from this area? I mean, all of you rural legislators, do you bring enough that you can... vote the same way well that's that's really no different than the um, 
delegation from Philadelphia County, they a lot of times generally vote the same way because their constituents, by and large, not always, but by and large, have the same kind of ideas and things that should happen. And I think that, uh, you know, sharing a, a county with Linda and Adam Harris and, and now Garth Everett with the redistricting in Union County, you know, our, our constituents aren't a whole lot different. So a lot of times we're going to be on the same wavelength and, and, you know, voting the same way. There might be minor things that we, we vote a little differently on because maybe, uh, you know, Garth uh, has some areas outside of Williamsport and, you know, I have areas of Lewisburg and Sealands Grove College towns that other people don't have. So, you know, there might be some, some votes that we take differently. But I think, uh, by and large, uh, you know, representing the area, and the way that, that I've approached that is the fact that, you know, we get out, we listen, uh, you know, try to get to as many community events as we can, see what's going on, and, uh, and just have a lot. I just really enjoy being able to do that. And the fact that the people of uh, Union and Snyder Counties have had the confidence in me to goes into it to, and the vote being the the ultimate the ultimate uh, thing that we cast after we've read the legislation after we've done our research Dan and I were talking a little bit before uh, before the program and of course I will be going between now and the sip, uh, 15th as we've already been doing uh, to meetings to discuss how we can get pension reform across the goal line and looking at that that that's something that that has been a personal goal of mine and I know I know I've talked about it on the show many times over the past three and a half years and, uh, you know, it's very important that we understand, you know, how we got into this situation so that when we look at a, a solution to it, we don't repeat the same kind of things that got us there. Well, one of the things that uh, I've been watching in the pension, I hear about how we got into it a great deal. I understand, and I think most people do understand, that we have ourselves in a predicament that we must get ourselves from. I haven't f seen people come up with solutions. They always want to tell me why we're there and how it got there, but I'd like to hear how we can get out of there. So what actually, do you actually, got, Fred? I, actually, there's several bills uh, before the General Assembly, and one that I that I actually uh, supported uh, you know, early on, it's uh, Chris Ross's bill, uh, House Bill 1350, and that, that was actually pretty much or pretty close to some of the ideas the governor had a couple years ago. Uh, looking at how we address, uh, you know, the accrual rate of, of future benefits, how we, um, you know, handle new hires, making sure, and, and the important thing is that anybody that's already retired, away from that plan we said okay we'll just deal with new hires you know we'll just look at new hires and go to a 401k kind of plan and this is what it does and, and there was a lot of misinformation that has been been uh, placed around uh, I think because of people wanting to make sure that that structure stays in place because they they personally benefit from it and uh, th that's the troubling part with this whole thing it is a sense of is issue because we are dealing with people's pensions, you know, and, and different things. But we've, we've shifted away from that. We strictly said new hires. So uh, for people to say, oh, they're losing something, if, if you haven't been hired and been promised that benefit yet, you're not really losing anything. Your benefit just isn't the same as it was for somebody else. And quite frankly, when you look at, at, at making it more similar to uh, private industry, I, I think that, you know, when we look at what happens there, it does prevent, uh, present a good opportunity for people to be able to retire, uh, e you know, with enough money. It's just a matter of making sure the mindset, you know, people are, and understand people are concerned that, oh, well,
was that his plan is argued against by the fact that it doesn't do anything for 11 years, that it doesn't uh, save on pensions at all. And people feel that maybe we don't have time to wait for 11 years for the uh, new pension ideas, which you just uh, aptly described, kick in. Well, well actually, in, in looking at the whole, the whole pension issue, and I've actually had some discussions with uh, Lieutenant Governor Single. Uh, he's actually a, uh, runs a, a think tank, the Winners Group, and I saw him at a couple meetings, and and he wrote some interesting things. I shared those on when I was on the show before about how our system was initially set up. It wasn't set up of people retired now, paying in, or people working now paying for people currently retired. It was a pay-as-you-go system. You know, you pay in the employer, being the school district and the state pays into the to the pensions, and that's your benefit. What's happened is because we as Pennsylvanians, and I, and I say it that way, I, I think it's important. We've, we've all spent the money. I mean, we, we can point the finger to the school districts into Harrisburg and say, well, they didn't make the contributions. That's totally true. N other charge cards so you don't continue to accumulate the debt. So that's the first thing we need. And by going to a different pension system, that's basically what we're doing. We're saying we're not going to increase the debt load for future generations. And I think that's very important that we don't put uh, kids that, you know, because there's kids that are in kindergarten or first grade or, you know, not even graduated from school that are going to pay in this bill over the next 30 years. And I think it's, it's important to, to uh, realize that and make sure that we don't continue to put a burden on those children that are still in school. All right, we're going to take a quick break. <laughs> Big inhale on the part of my co-host, but you have to wait. Hold that question. I was going to say, isn't it break time, no, Mark? It, yeah. I think uh, Kevin's getting agitated over there. I, I don't think Kevin gets agitated. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no, he doesn't stop being agitated, actually. Yeah, you never. just have never seen him. He never, non agitated. Yeah, he never agitates. He's always agitated. <laughs> All righty, we are going to take a quick break, and we are going to hear from one of our main sponsors, which is the Sunbury Motor Company. While looking for a vehicle, you know that if it sounds too good to be true, chances are it is too good to be true. You get the runaround, got to go from place to place. Well, you can just skip all of that and go straight to Sunbury Motor Company. Sunbury Motor Company has been satisfying more customers and selling more cars since 1915, so you know they've got it right. No offers that look good on paper or online, and then you get disappointed when you see them in person. Sunbury Motor Company offers a lineup few other auto dealers in the area can compete with. With the inventory Ford, Hyundai, Kia, and Lincoln vehicles, there will be no problem finding the right vehicle that fits your needs and your budget. And the friendly, knowledgeable staff's ready and able to help you with everything from the test drive to the drive off the lot. See for yourself at Sunbury Motors. Sunbury Motors, Ford, Lincoln, Hyundai, in the North 4th Street Auto Plaza, Sunbury, and Sunbury Motors, Kia, Routes 11 and 15, Hummels Wharf. Look for them online anytime at sunburymotors.com. This is Justin Charles from Lenape Solar. Did you know we use exclusive manufacturing partners? Our solar modules are made with American components in an American factory by an American company in Milwaukee. Our lighting fixtures are made less than three hours away in Philadelphia. Even our fluorescent lamps are made here in the U.S., as are our solar racking systems. We're dedicated not just to quality, but our local economy. Find out more by calling 286-1496, online at lenapesolar.com, or drop by our showroom at 140 South 2nd Street, Sunbury, and see these products in person. We had it all, just like Buggy in the car, starring in our own. Making reference uh, to the death of Lauren McCall. We'll talk about that during the 9 o'clock hour as well. Thank you very much, uh, Kevin Hurt, greatest engineer in all of the adjoining room. I'm Mark Lawrence, uh, Than Mitchell, my co-host, and our guest today, Fred Keller, the state representative in the 85th District. If you have a question about what we've talked about so far and wish to weigh in on that or you have another type of question, call the toll-free line, which is 1-800-795-9565. Something you mentioned before, Fred, about the uh, 
school districts in the state not contributing as they should have to the benefit packages over the years because they felt that our economy was growing so fast that we would be able to catch up next year. So, And then, of course, it crashed, and the benefits, uh, the pension plans, got nailed. Now, is it legal for the state to say, well, we didn't pay, but forget it, and the school districts to say, well, we didn't pay, but forget it, because it seems to me someplace along the line, we paid for this as employees, if if I were a public employee, and we're not getting what we pay for. Well, well, well the one thing is the employees, will, you know, looking at what we have to pay, will get paid. You know, the employees will get paid. What it's going to mean is it's going to take additional additional revenue to do that. Uh, is it legal to do that? There's a, there's actually a formula when you look at the actuaries and uh, that you take that that is taken into account for the growth and you know the, the way the the way the pension law is set up. You know they, they look at the you know an, an average of, of so many years and they say okay this is what we need to do or this is what our expected rate of return is. Uh, uh, you know a lot of people say we're fifty fifty billion dollars in the hole. That's if you believe that we're going to get a seven and a half percent rate of return on our investments for the next 30 years. That's the governor governor's plan, isn't that's it? That's not the that governor's plan. That's current that's current that's current pension. I mean that's that's a, that's what the actuaries I shouldn't say actuaries. That's what the the systems, Peacers and Sears and, and Peacers is the public school employees retirement system and Sears is the state employees retirement system. Um, but they the 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 systems themselves say it's going to be a 7.5% rate of return. Now, they reduced that. I think it was up until 2006 or 2007. They were figuring on 8, and they, they backed it back to 7, you know, keeping in mind for the kind of system we have. And I've talked to some investment people, some locally, and, and I said if, if one was going to invest into a plan themselves and, and try and, and replicate that kind of uh, return, I said, well, what should they expect to get? And he said somewhere around 55 you know, uh, one guy said five and a half. Somebody said five to six. Somebody said around five. So I'll say five and a half. It'd probably be an area. So looking at that, if if we should actually expect to get five and a half, then we're more underfunded than that seven and a half because you know it doesn't. And again, a lot of things can happen. Policy that's made uh, in D.C. can impact how our returns are on our pensions and so forth. You know, it, depending on how the stock market. You know, a lot a lot of people look at the stock market and think that that's only uh, wealthy people that the, the big corporations and, and, and billionaires and millionaires are invested in that. But our state pension systems are invested in that. And, and I, there was an article in the paper that a lady had written recently, and it actually had mentioned about some of those things. And, and actually checking it, you can go online and see what their po portfolios are on those pensions. And actually checking it, this lady did her research because it's accurate. It's like two two million shares of... Uh, of uh, GE, you know, a, a million shares of Exxon Mobil, Chevron, you know, all these corporations, and and our pension systems are counting on those corporations to make money to fund our pensions. That's 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 what it is. I mean, if we don't get that seven and a half percent rate of return, we don't get it. You know, it doesn't happen. Now, Than, we talked about one thing that caused the pension issue, and that was the underfunding. Uh, there's a couple things that the the General Assembly did. And 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 gov when Governor Ridge was in office, and the, and and he supported, and so did all the you know the the labor organizations, and I think it started probably then with the uh, I I'm not sure where it started, but I think it started with the administration looking at you know what can we do here, we changed the multiplier, and if you if you look at how it's calculated, uh, the it's it's the years of service times two and a half percent. So if somebody works for thirty years, they multiply that times two and a half percent, and they would get seventy five percent of their three highest years. And looking at that, that's if they don't retire early. That's if they don't take their lump sum out. If, if people make those decisions, then their benefits reduced. If somebody decides to retire at 52, you yeah. know, then, then there's a, you know, hey, you're going to retire at 52, so we're, the benefits reduced. But if they work to the retirement age, which is 60, or a, or a combination of years of service and age that adds up to 92, then, then they don't take the penalty for that. If they don't withdraw any of their money, then they don't take the penalty. So understand there's decisions that, a, that an employee can make when they retire that may change that benefit. But if they don't, that's the calculation. Well, the multiplier prior to 2001 used to be 2. So what you did was you just increased that uh, liability and you made it retroactive. 
So the people that were in the system up until 2001 that might have worked there 10 or 15 or 16 or 20 years got that benefit that, they, that their employer and they never had an opportunity uh, you know, to contribute for. Uh, so that's another thing, the construction of the system. And, th and that's an interesting point because actually the daily item, or not daily item, excuse me, the, uh, the radio station, WKOK News, in December of uh, 2009, actually had done an article or an, a story on, on uh, in the school system, superintendents moving from this area to other areas to, and, and their salaries increased. I mean, I, I can mention the names, and I don't, I don't want to do anything. And I'm not faulting the people for doing that. I'm simply saying we need to change the rules. But there's a person who, 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 whose salary increased 98%. One who was 59, one who was 62, one who was 22. So you're looking at people that move from one job to another, same same position, but just at a at a, at a metropolitan area. And, and when you do that, and you've worked in a system for I'll say 20 years, and you go for the last four or five years, and you bump your salary like that, your employer and you never had the opportunity to contribute money for that. And and that's another issue. And, and the reason I say that is to understand what happens, so that when we fix it. We don't, we don't create some of the same issues we had. That's why I believe a, a, a defined contribution system for new hires is the way to go because that payment is then made, to your point, Van, it's then made right when they earn it. Well, Fred, we're going to take a quick break here. Can you hang around a little bit after the hour? I know yes. you're a busy man. I know you've got a lot to do. But Actually, I think, we figure, I think we figured until 930. Okay. Okay. Good enough. Well, that if we figured that, we got it. We're doing the basics of uh, pensioneering here. What is a divine contribution plan? Any other elements of how we got where we are, we can talk about and common sense solutions, even though we're discussing Harrisburg. We'll be talked about when we return on WDKOK Sunbury. CBS News, I'm Frank Setapani. It's that kind of a morning in much of the East. I just had a driver scream out to me, this is the commute from hell. WCBS's Mike Zirinax is on the road in Suffolk County, Long Island, where the storm that swamped parts of Maryland and the Washington area yesterday is still going strong. There are, have been stranded motorists that were being pulled from their vehicles, water up to their windows. The rain has been torrential, getting around an absolute nightmare, constantly confronted by one flooded roadway after another. Emergency management official Mary Gepford says a creek overflowed its banks in Millville, New Jersey. They did evacuate about 40 homes there. All but about 10 homes have been reoccupied. A summertime monsoon in Phoenix trapped some drivers in their cars. Others were able to find a dry spot to ride out the storm. I pulled off of the road because the water was flowing so fast. There was another protest last night in Ferguson, Missouri. Police used tear gas to break up the crowd. Not far from the spot where a policeman shot and killed an unarmed teenager over the weekend, there was another shooting incident. CBS News correspondent Mark Strauss. Police responded to a crowd of people uh, gathered in one uh, spot. At least four guys were wearing ski masks. A police officer claimed that uh, at least one man pulled out a handgun and for his own uh, defense was forced to shoot that guy. That guy is reportedly in critical condition. What the health care reform law gave, the health care reform law could take away. Live to CBS News correspondent Barry Bagnato. Letters are going out to around 310,000 people telling them they're running out of time to clear up discrepancies on their health insurance forms. These are applicants who signed up through the federal exchange and need to provide required documentation to prove citizenship, for instance, or at least show they're living in the country legally. Documents can be, can be mailed to the government or uploaded on the healthcare.gov website. Deadline, September 5th, just over three weeks from now. Frank? Americans were watching their pennies in July. The Commerce Department says retail sales were flat in spite of the job gains in recent months. Sales for the month were up $161 million. The government calls that statistically insignificant. She was a last link to the glamour days of the golden age of Hollywood movies. Who was the girl, Steve? Who was what girl? The one who left you with such a high opinion of women. Lauren Bacall, who died yesterday at the age of 89, was only 19 when she made her first movie, starring opposite Humphrey Bogart in To Have and Have Not. Before long, he was divorced and they were married. The marriage ended when Bogart died in 1957. It took me years and years and years to get over it, actually. I never got over it, actually. You don't ever get over those things. In Miami today, Justin Bieber is expected to plead guilty to reduce charges in an alleged drag racing case. He'll have to donate $50,000 to charity and take anger management classes, but won't do any jail time. S&P futures are up six points. This is CBS News. 
The battery, modern day fire, powering everything from remote control cars to the car in your garage. So when your car battery is reaching the end of the line or you're wondering whether it is, stop by Advance Auto Parts. We'll test your old one for you, free of charge. And if you purchase a new Autocraft battery, we'll install it for free. Only if you'd like us to, of course. Advance Auto Parts, let's get you back to the garage. Most vehicles, most locations. See store for details. Don't complain about your cable bill going up and up and up. Do something about it. Grab a pencil and jot down this special number. Call 877-319-MYTV. The more cable TV rates go up, the better digital satellite TV looks. So cancel the cable and get more of your favorite channels in 100% digital quality for less money. Call 877-319-MYTV. At just $24.99, what are you waiting for? Pull out your major credit or debit card. Call 877-319-MYTV. That's 877-319-MYTV. A convoy a mile long is rumbling through Russia to the border with Ukraine. CBS's Kami McCormick has the latest from Kiev. The Ukrainian government is angrily denouncing this Russian convoy as a provocation. Kiev is suspicious of what's on these trucks and says they won't be allowed into the Kharkiv region, which borders Russia. The fighting in the east of Ukraine is continuing. There have been fierce battles. Twelve Ukrainian soldiers were killed early this morning when rebels ambushed their bus. The United Nations Human Rights Office says close to 2,100 people have been killed in the fighting in Ukraine, more than half of them in just the past few weeks. In Iraq, his support is eroding even among fellow Shiites, but Prime Minister Nouri al-Maliki refuses to surrender power. Maliki is demanding a ruling from the Iraqi Supreme Court before accepting his removal. Maliki's enemies blame him for alienating Sunnis, giving rise to the ISIS insurgency that's been sweeping over northern Iraq. Frank Setupani, CBS News. Today is the day you switch to Rite Aid for one simple reason, Wellness Plus, the card that gives you credits you can use like cash, plus discounts that only members get, plus 20% off almost the entire store, plus that's for a whole year, plus rewards that start today and pile on every time you shop. So if you're tired of missing out on all the pluses only Rite Aid delivers, visit RiteAidWellness.com to sign up and learn more today about Wellness Plus. Rite Aid, with us, it's personal. If there were an 83% chance of rain, you'd probably grab an umbrella. So if there was an 83% chance you'd have a problem with one of your vehicle's tires, what would you do? Let the experts at your Ford dealer inspect your tires. You'll get up to $130 in mail-in rebates on select tires when you use the Ford Service credit card. Subject to credit approval. Rebate by prepaid debit card. Other tire manufacturer rebate or offer cannot be combined with Ford Service credit card rebate or offer. Data from Rubber Manufacturers Association. See your participating Ford dealer for details through 831 -14. News Radio 1070 WKOK presents On the Mark. It's a chance to voice your opinion on the events that affect life in the Susquehanna Valley. Call 1 800 795 9565 or email on the mark at WKOK.com. Now, here are your hosts for On the Mark, Mark Lawrence and Than Mitchell. Greetings and welcome back to the WKOK Live Telephone Talk Show. I am Mark Lawrence. The webcam is up and running. Go to WKOK.com. You can watch it immediately live at that moment or go to our YouTube channel and watch the archive of On the Mark. Lenape Solar email in basket is open. You simply do as one of our listeners has done. Send us a note at On the Mark at WKOK.com and we'll ask our state representative here about topics going on in Harrisburg. Lenape Solar, fastest growing solar company in the valley would just love to visit your business why because you'll save a buck if you have a commercial lighting audit and undertake the suggestions that they provide and they can save businesses money goodbye tungsten hello led and in comes the green not light but green that you save sometimes paying for the whole project and the consultation within a year and on the mark brought to you by the sunbury motor company family owned dealership since 1915 they specialize in all types of service at their main garage which is the quick lane that's where they take care of vehicles, uh, state inspections. If you've got a road trip plan, they'll make sure all your belts and hoses and fluids are up to speed. See, if you're going anywhere, then you can get your hoses and, and belts checked. I, I always check my belt and before I leave. Yes. <laughs> fluids, and, absolutely. And pressures. And they will also put nitrogen in you. And they would that would well, help you. That makes you sound. No, that's no, not nitrogen. I think you're else. right. Yeah. Sunbury Motors. I would not recommend nitrogen 
uh, 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 like helium thing. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> We're already you, breathing uh, nitrogen, but it doesn't seem to be hurting us too badly. I'm Although, not sure you want to do pure direct, though. No, I think oxygen's a key component in, <laughs> yeah. in breathing. Yeah, so I think so. Just mm. call it a whim. I don't know. A uh, couple of quick news headlines here. Unfortunately, yesterday, tragic accident, Route 61. 29 year old Tanya Kaler of Marion Heights died in a crash, went off the road in her SUV and hit a tree. A top education advisor to Governor Tom Corbett, who previously served as education secretary is leaving after questions were raised about his duties and work schedule. Education Department said Tuesday that Ron Tamala's last day in the Corbett administration as a $140,000 annual advisor will be August 26th. The Pittsburgh Post-Gazette said his work calendar had few weeks of little or no activity, or had uh, little or no activity, period. Phone logs that barely m- averaged a call per day and only five outgoing emails, but still collecting $140,000 a year, Tamala says he'll leave as of August 26th. 26th. He still has a call to make before then, so we'll <laughs> yeah. give him a chance to do that. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Fox News Shepard Smith says Robin Williams was a coward to kill himself. Smith made the comment during Fox's coverage of Williams' death Monday. He said it was sad that Williams' kids had given him such joy, but the comedian was such a coward that he decided to end his life. Fox News uh, then, of course, angered critics and uh, individuals on Facebook and Twitter criticizing Shepard Smith for saying that Robin Williams was a coward. A bit insensitive, wouldn't you say? Well, there's another paragraph here. It says, mental health expert Bam Cole Johnson at the University of Maryland says it's unkind and ill-informed to suggest those who kill themselves are cowards. He says individuals with suicidal thoughts and severe and persistent mental illness can no more control those impulses than an individual can decide not to have a heart attack. So we'll look for an apology. Well, well you, you know, look at that, and, and, and again, it's hard to say and criticize somebody when you're not sitting or you're not in their shoes. and. And it, it's tragic that, that it happened, and it's tragic. It's just we were talking a little bit about, you know, the DUI and, and the drug court in Union and Snyder counties, and those people don't choose to have those diseases, and, and certainly nobody chooses, I, I don't believe chooses, that they want to go and end their life. You know, I, I think we get in trouble when we start to criticize people without understanding what's happening. Uh, and I'm really surprised that Fox News would uh, misinform somebody that way, that possibly he was a coward. I'm kidding, because that's what I think of Fox News most of the time as being uh, well, a lot, insensitive. A lot of news shows, uh, you know, I, don't, I think, you know, say things that aren't Oh, absolutely. That, that aren't accurate and, you know. Including yeah. this one. All talk shows are full of but, but then uh, of opinions and not necessarily facts. But, Than, for, for a talk show to, to have a call-in show like this, for, for a caller to call in and, and put their opinion out there is fine. You know, th- that, that's... Th- that's perfectly okay. But when you have a guest you know, you know, on a show that, like Mike, me, I should not, I, I won't say anything. But uh, your guest shouldn't be saying things. And Mark is the director of the show you know, should should make sure that when he's saying something, you know, it's based on fact and, you know, there's not innuendo and we're not criticizing people for the way they behave, but dealing with the issues. So, you know, you could look at any show. I think there's a higher, I think there's a higher responsibility for the hosts and also for the guests to make sure what they're saying is not, is not laced with innuendo and, and those kind of things. However, in any opinion, isn't there innuendo that uh, well, has to be considered on both sides? But then I think you have to say, this is my opinion. Mm. Well, this is an opinion show, so, you know, well, but I, it's on I the, think... It's I think on the mark, then, so you would take from that that <laughs> the guests are going to be what's to the point and what's accurate. But the host has to watch out. I think there's a certain amount of responsibility oh, there I do to too. make sure. That's what Kevin just said to me a week ago, and I argued adamantly that he was well, incorrect. Well, Mark, Mark, Mark I, you know, we we talked here today, and I, I I'll put you on the spot here a little bit, and I don't mean to do well, yeah, I do mean to do it. Or I wouldn't <laughs> yeah, do yeah, it. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, Please. But you know, we talked today, and I I think we agreed that you know I approach my job, and I, and I think I do a good job at it, and you know my my constituent here, Than does, and yep. But but on the twenty fifth, I'll, I'll even pull the day out. Uh, you were here with Joe McGranahan, and you, and you actually made the stor- statement that you think you know I do my job poorly, and you know. I think that we need to have that discussion and make sure that, wh- why do I do my job poorly? You may not agree with me, but that doesn't mean I do my job what poorly. What was the specific context? There was, was, there was some of those areas where we disagreed. There, 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 was something, there was somebody that called in and talked about the fact that, that, you know, I tell people where I stand. And when I tell people where I stand, that's because I've talked to my constituents, I've done the research and everything else, and this is my opinion, meaning that I'm not going to tell you something differently in Lewisburg or Mifflinburg or Sealands Grove or Harrisburg 
it's going to be a consistent thing. And, and I'm not going to worry about, well, if this person doesn't agree with me, are they going to vote for me and then go somewhere else and say something different? I won't do that. Here's where I am on the issues. Uh, respectfully, we'll have the dialogue and the debate. And, uh, you know, I'll make a decision based upon the input from my constituents and what, I've, what I said I would do. Uh, but anyhow, you, I think Joe made the comment that, you know, if Fred, if Fred or Linda didn't vote the way you would, you'd think they're doing a poor job. And you said, I already do. I think the I'll have to go back and listen to the specific context, mm -hmm. but I vaguely remember the whole thing. This is why I disagree with you in that regard, because you use your personal viewpoints to uh, strongly influence your votes, not necessarily what your constituents may want. Oh, like uh, medical marijuana might be an example well, of this, well, or gay marriage. Well, let me, let, let me answer that, Mark, and, and I'll say this. I, when I got elected, you know, I told people there were there were three items that. It was what I believed and I would not change on. And that was life begins at conception, marriage is a man and a woman, and the Second Amendment rights. I said everything else is open for debate, and I've behaved that way. Uh, so, you know, looking at that, I've done what I said I'm going to do. So to say I do my job poorly and I interject that on every decision, I think I don't think is fair. Okay, let me ask you this, though. Is it fair, if you use your personal opinion, to keep two gay men from marrying, is that fair to them when they have a totally different and deeply held belief? Well, well actually, the, the court's already ruled on that. So of we, course, you, you of know, course. But, but that's the problem that I think that but, but the whole point bringing is, up. But the whole point that I bring up with is I look at what, you know, let's actually take a look at what everybody thinks. You know, there's, there's also, uh, you, you know, if, if somebody just wants to get married to, to make sure that they're covered on somebody else's health insurance plan, do same-sex pe sex, same -sex people can't get married just to cover somebody on insurance either. So I don't know that there's any discrimination. You know, you're looking at why they want to get married. You know, it, it wasn't discriminatory towards anybody. It was just saying they're the same sex. Again, the courts have ruled on that, so. You know, yeah, that is passed. That's so w back to what you and I were discussing, the fact that I would say that you don't do your job uh, well, not, not to use my precise language, to, that you would do your job poorly, is because you, you allow your personal uh, viewpoints to influence what you vote on despite what your constituents may feel. Now, mm -hmm. you're a representative, and I think you should be representative. Well, Mark, what's your, what's Mark your, I do. Hold, let me finish. Let me finish. I let you give, okay. laid out the whole scenario. I think as a representative, you should represent the people, even if your personal viewpoints may go another way. Now, I never said you were dishonest, and so from mm -hmm. I think you were wrong on uh, using your personal viewpoints to guide your political decision making from the get go when you promised that up into the four years that well, you've already put in. Well, well, though, Mark, I will say, uh, I've had the debate on the other issues, and I've I've held true to what I said I was going to do. When, when somebody votes for me, they knew that that's how I would behave on those issues. Right, yeah, I never and said you were dishonest. Any other, any other issue, I take into account what my, what's it, what, what my constituents are putting in. So if there's anything on transportation or uh, other, other items like that, I mean, again, ta transportation was a tax increase. You know, and I'm not, I'm not a big one for increasing taxes, but my constituents wanted me to vote for that bill because of the highway and the throughway, and I see the benefits of it. So to, to say that I take my viewpoints and my beliefs into every vote I take is not fair. I don't think I said that. But you just said that I use it for my political decisions and the votes that I take. What I'm saying is on those items that I say I don't change on, I won't change on. But my focus has always been jobs, the economy, uh, you know, state reducing the size of state government, more effective, more responsive state government. So who we are is, you know, is, is how we behave. But when it comes to listening to my constituents, I think I've I've done a very good job at that. And there have been I know there were people that were surprised uh, when I supported uh, Senator Toomey, and when he was trying to to work together on some of this uh, this legislation in in, in D.C. on on guns and you know um, concealed carry permits and those gun sales and so forth on that. Uh, I, I've shown that I can cross the aisle and that I don't make it all about what my beliefs are, but I make it about what's best for my constituents by listening to them. And I've, I've done that. And I, like I said, on the three issues that I say I don't change on, those are, everybody knows that, though, when they vote for me. So most of the time when you vote in Harrisburg, you are have at least listened to it, in many cases, representing your constituents. 
Yes. I, I, yeah. I'm so in some cases, then, in, in Harrisburg, you are not representing your constituents no. and you're voting your personal views. Yeah. No. The, the only time I would vote my personal and we actually really haven't had a vote on anything that I talked about. Of those three. Well, other than the Castle Doctrine, which, by the way, my constituents agreed with. You know, so, so again, my, my constituents are 62,000 people. You know, while everybody thinks that their opinion is right and they're in the majority, that's not always the case. 62,000, that's a good number. We got two calls. Some, somewhere somewhere on this in 62,000. So here we, we go. Are, are you satisfied that I've explained <coughs> my <coughs> remark? <coughs> All right. 1 800 795 9565. We are in open phones with State Representative Fred Keller. We were in the middle of a pension discussion. Chris was fascinated by that, probably more fascinated with the last 10 minutes, but <laughs> <laughs> he's on the line with us. Thanks for calling in. Uh, maybe even more bored by the last 10 minutes. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> There's always that, too. Uh, what's on your mind, Chris? Uh, about the pensions, I'm not sure the the credit card analogy and the family spending type analogy is really, or the business of analogy really is the best way to look at the government. Uh, but uh, skipping that for the moment and moving I'm not sure what the real solution, for the best solution is for the pensions, but deciding to get rid of the pensions altogether seems like a drastic step instead of improving the pension law so you don't run into this problem again and look at what caused the problem and where the problem was. And especially the 2001 vote seems to be the real source of it as far as I can tell. But you can't. I also object to this the rhetoric you use uh, about uh, continuing the debt for our children if we don't do this. Uh, if you don't want to continue the debt to our children, raise taxes now on something and pay for it. It was the state government that screwed this whole thing up. Tax people now for the next 10 years and fix it. Then make it a 10-year tax, and it's over, and then you aren't screwing our children All and right. our grandchildren. Uh, let's get his that's, reaction that's to this. That's what would really change it. Not, All right. Not Hold on, Chris. Let's get his reaction. Well, I, I don't know of any tax. You know, you look at the federal income tax. That was supposed to be a temporary tax how many years ago? Uh, the problem is when you tax and you take, you take somebody's money, uh, you know, I, I don't know that many taxes have been repealed. Yeah, but you've already spent it. Is the point? You, you've you already. I mean? You've already spent it. And you've already guaranteed spending it, and apparently it's against the law for you to take it back. I'm not sure there's not a way around that too, for that matter. Well, there there are a lot of uh, e even changing the the future accrual rate for benefits of current employees. Yeah. Not that not anything they've earned, but future accrual rate has been promised in lawsuits. And, and, and while, rather than waste the people's money and tie up in a legal battle, how do we get around it? I think a defined contribution plan, like uh, almost all of private industry has, is, is a way that, that we don't create some of these things. And it also makes sure that the payment is made and when the, the person other earns thing the benefit. I have a question about is that in that solution. You know, I agree. That's a, that's a possible solution, and it might be a good one. I haven't really decided, and it's a very complicated issue that I don't entirely know. But, uh, but it seems to me that if you're going to cut out the, the guaranteed pension that was attracting the many teachers to the job, uh, it seems to me you're probably going to have to increase their salary to make up for that. And that will also be costly. Well, well looking at right. looking Thank at you, Chris. Okay. Yeah, yeah, just just question. looking just looking at and, and you know as far as the the guarantee. Well, the guarantee would be the same that every other employee that's paying the bill gets in private industry that that doesn't have the defined benefit plan would be the fact that we're going to give you four percent. I mean, I I know the PSEA even put out there that the normal cost is two point two percent. If the normal cost is two point two percent, and they believe that then why wouldn't they advocate to go to this because it's an 81 percent increase in the, in the amount of money that the state would contribute to that pension what would fix this issue of uh, district jumping for the peacers one what would fix that I, I think the defined the defined contribution does that and, and for people that that aren't have, have have not dug as deeply into this and I don't expect everybody to do that because everybody has jobs and and uh, you know we're supposed to be making sure we do the research uh, but a defined benefit plan is where there's a, a specific calculation like we have now that if somebody works for X amount of years, then they'll be guaranteed those payments. 
level payments. A defined contribution is we're going to give you a certain percentage of your salary that's going to go into an account in your name, and then how that grows is your money, and then you will have that pot of dollars to take with you and, 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 uh, you, and use for your retirement. All right. I have to take a quick break. I'm going to do that. I have a caller waiting. So, uh, Joe, please be as patient as you can and uh, stand by. We are going to take a quick break, and uh, we have 10 more minutes. Oh, no, eight more minutes left with State House member Fred Keller, 85th District. Main sponsor is the Sunbury Motor Company. While looking for a vehicle, you know that if it sounds too good to be true, chances are it is too good to be true. You get the runaround, got to go from place to place. Well, you can just skip all of that and go straight to Sunbury Motor Company. Sunbury Motor Company has been satisfying more customers and selling more cars since 1915, so you know they've got it right. No offers that look good on paper or online, and then you get disappointed when you see them in person. Sunbury Motor Company offers a lineup few other auto dealers in the area can compete with. With the inventory of Ford, Hyundai, Kia, and Lincoln vehicles, there will be no problem finding the right vehicle that fits your needs and your budget. And the friendly, knowledgeable staff's ready and able to help you with everything from the test drive to the drive off the lot. See for yourself at Sunbury Motors. Sunbury Motors, Ford, Lincoln, Hyundai, in the North 4th Street Auto Plaza, Sunbury, and Sunbury Motors, Kia, Routes 11 and 15, Hummels Wharf. Look for them online anytime at sunburymotors.com. If there were an 83% chance of rain, you'd probably grab an umbrella. If there were an 83% chance you could hit the lottery, you'd probably buy a ticket. So if there was an 83% chance that one of your vehicle's tires had a problem, what would you do? The experts at your Ford dealer know that whether it's not properly inflated, losing tread, or wearing unevenly, 83% of all vehicles have an issue with at least one tire. So have your tires checked by the factory-trained experts at your Ford dealer. They know your Ford and its tires better than anyone. And now get up to $130 in mail-in rebates on select tires when you use the Ford Service Credit Card. And you'll always get the low price tire guarantee on the 13 name brands we sell. Ford, go further. Subject to credit approval. Rebate by prepaid debit card. Competitive ad required for tire guarantee within 30 days. Other tire manufacturer rebate or offer cannot be combined with Ford Service credit card rebate or offer. Data from Rubber Manufacturers Association. See your participating Ford dealer for details through 831 -14. Lee's Carpet resists spills and stains so well, Oberdorf's Carpet One Floor and Home is having a spillabration. Enjoy 50% off with 18 months special financing on select styles of Lee's Carpet. Plus, you can save up to 30% on select hardwood, laminate, and tile floors, too. Hurry in. The Lee's Spillabration Savings Event ends September 21st at Oberdorf's Carpet One, Route 15, one mile south of Lewisburg. Subject to credit approval. Minimum monthly payments required. See store for details. News Radio 1070 WKOK brings you news and information right to your mobile device with the WKOK app for iPhone and Android. With the WKOK app, you can listen to WKOK 24-7. See the news of the day with the WKOK.com link and watch our news videos, including On the Mark, live or archived feed for free. Visit the App Store and Google Play to download the free WKOK app to your phone, iPad, or tablet. Then you'll have full access everywhere you go to News Radio 1070 WKOK and WKOK.com. Welcome back to the KOK Live Telephone Talk Show. State Representative Fred Keller, closing moments of our hour long visit with him. Boy, where does the time go? Unbelievable. Uh, Joe is on the line. Thank you for patiently waiting through the break. You are on the mark. Well, thank you, Mark. Um, I somewhat disagree with you and fans' philosophy on representation, and this is why. When I am a candidate, or Fred is a candidate, we tell people what we believe, what we stand for, and who we are, and that is why I voted for Fred, because I know what his values are. I don't expect him to change with the wind by sticking his finger up and see which way the poles are blowing. I expect him to stand on principle and what he believes. So... I understand that he's our representative, but he's representing me and my values when I vote for him when I know what he stands for when he runs for office. So, uh, you know, a little bit different philosophy on what representation means to you and what it means to me, but I just want to say to Fred, thank you for representing our district the way he said he was going to do. And Fred and I don't always agree on every issue, but he is the most I mean, he and, and, and Linda both, all of our representatives in central Pennsylvania, 
are not afraid to have a conversation about the issues. And if we don't agree, that's okay. And, you know, we, Dan, you and I have had many a, a, an argument or a disagreement, but we respect each other for those disagreements. Well, yeah, and, and Joe, that's very true. I would say the only thing I would add to that is if you guys have a particular uh, private feeling about how you should uh, uh, vote and so forth, you've got to remember that you must respect the minority as well because, uh, you know, obviously you get uh, elected by the majority, but we in the minority, and in this case I, I am because being a Democrat in these two counties, you got to respect what uh, we think as well. And uh, by the way, I think you do, but it is necessary in your office. Oh, a- absolutely. You, you know, when you look at this, you have to respect everybody's opinion, and, and that's not a problem. But but Joe's right. You know, I had somebody ask me before I before I got elected, they said, Fred, what would you do if you were to vote against the will of your constituents? And I said, well, if it's on the issues that I told them what I stood for, I would be disappointing all those people that voted for me when I told them how I was going to behave. And I think that's Joe's point. You know, this is how I'm going to behave on these issues. Thank you, Joe. Then there's things that are business decisions that says, do we do this or don't we because of a business decision? And actually, there's one here that comes up. It's, It's the health center issue, you know, that there's a county health center in each county and and the governor wanted to consolidate those and took a, bo- a bunch of backlash. It's in the courts because we're supposed to offer this. But here comes the, here's what I call business decision. We should consolidate those when the average visits, and this is from the Department of Health, in the Snyder County Health Center was seven-tenths of a person per week. And in Union County, it was 1.2. That's a business decision. We need to pull it. We need to get it out. We need to discuss it. And how do we behave on this kind of issue? That's how they do their work with visits. They don't do other Well, well they do outreach. So the governor's point was if we centralize that, we won't have the fixed cost in each county, and we can take more of that money we're spending on fixed costs and drive it out to that outreach when those people are out in the community seeing people and see more people in the community and take that service to them. I think the governor had a great idea with that. And what happened was uh, the unions and the courts got in the way of it and said, no, Governor, you can't do it. And, and, and there's so many things. I, it's interesting you talked, and I'm going on, we're talking about many things here now. But you had a news story about the LCB wanting to raise their, their markup from 30% to 35%. I don't know any business that marks anything up 35 Well, I shouldn't say anything. Uh, there probably are some businesses that mark things up that much. But uh, a lot of businesses don't have that kind of markup, 35%. And it's just a matter of there's no competition so they can charge it and get it uh, and that's why i've been i've been an advocate of of uh, privatize, privatization of the the state owned liquor stores because i just don't think that that's a function of state government and there again most of my constituents would agree with me on that. i don't know if fan does or not but a lot of my constituents that's that's probably the majority uh, opinion and i think statewide it's about 72 percent of the people think that the state should get out of the booze business i don't drink uh, i have some constituents there again, there's where I have some constituents that said, Fred, you know, he's particularly the, on, the, on the religious right, say, well, you should never get rid of that. But, the, you know, here again, taking my beliefs in this, in this say, the Bible doesn't say you should be, you know, you can't drink. And I also, think uh, Jesus turned water into wine. Yeah, I, yeah. So, so you, you <laughs> sort of look at that. And then, of course, nowhere in a state constitution. And, and, and does it say that the state should be in that kind of business? And I base my decisions on the state constitution because it has to be constitutional if we make a decision. All right, Dave, uh, you got a minute with our state representative. Okay, well, one thing, Walter, uh, a while ago you said about how, no, they, don't re- uh, they never repeal taxes. Prime example is the Jonestown Flood Act. The Jonestown Flood has been paid for for how many years, but we still collect the taxes for it. But anyhow, you're kind of hard on the guy being is that uh, the the public policy poll about the gay marriage was 51 percent of Pennsylvanians thought it should be illegal. Only 38 percent thought they should legalize it. You know, so that sounds like somebody that voted against gay marriage would be voting with their constituents. But the thing of it is, and listening to you on the program, Mark, any time a politician does something that you personally don't agree with. He's an idiot. So that's just my two cents. But, hey, have a great day, guys. Hey, thanks, Dave. I never heard you call Fred an idiot or any <laughs> other bad name, Mark. I honestly <laughs> haven't. No, and, 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 and Mark hasn't done that. I just, like I said, there were a couple things that went on, and, I, you know, we, we talked about it. And, you know, Mark and I get along. You'll uh, come back and talk about this again? Yeah, we can. We can do that. But you, me, Joe, Cants, and Than 
do a discussion about this in a couple of weeks. Well, well I, I think we need to do a discussion, too, about what the scope of state government is. You know, in, well, private, be part of it. in yeah. private industry, you know, I used to have a saying, you know, if you, you know we did it. You know, if you tell us how you're going to, if you tell me how you're going to measure me, I'll tell you how I'm going to perform. Meaning if that's one of my goals, that's what I'm going to focus on. And if it's not one of my goals, you know, then, then it's out of the scope of what, what, what my job is. And I think we need to look at that on state government level. And, uh, you know, what is this a responsibility or something state government should be doing? You know, with Ann and I were having a discussion about district offices and, you know, just different stuff here off the, off the air. And I think there's a lot of, a lot of things that we can look at and, and improve the, the scope of government, improve the size of government, and deliver quality service at an effective price. I'll give you a closing idiotic statement. <laughs> <laughs> How about that? Well, well I just want to say that, you know, uh, I, I love the opportunity to be able to talk to the constituents of, uh, you know, or the people of central Pennsylvania, particularly my constituents of Union and Snyder County. I am, I am truly blessed by the fact that uh, the majority of them have had the confidence in me to be their representative for the last uh, three and a half years. And even the people that disagree with me on some issues, we, we respectfully have the dialogue. And I do value everybody's opinion because there isn't somebody that should, as soon as you've discredited somebody's opinion, you've, you've devalued them as a person. And I don't believe in doing that. Well, and I love you as a friend, and I think uh, even though I think in terms of carrying the personal viewpoints to, to your discussions, not necessarily votes, and Harrisburg, uh, I appreciate your honesty. You are, in fact, what you said you would be, and th that is even rarer well, than, well, uh, than, than other issues in Harrisburg. I, I think so, and, and, and not only have I done that, and I, I'm, I'm going to put a little bit of plug in here for the governor. I think he's done that, too. I think he's, he said this is what, how we're going to do, and it's how we're going to balance the budget and things we're going to do. And I think he's promises kept is one thing he had on his thing. I, he's lived up to it. No one calls him a hypocrite, right? I don't. And I certainly wouldn't call you one either. Mm -hmm. So, Oh, nor an idiot. I don't know where this guy's getting that, yeah. but I think he, he probably agrees with but, people with whom I disagree. Well, you know what, Mark? I, I, again, I, I've always said we, don't, we shouldn't label things or people. We should, you know, have the respect and and okay. have the discussion. I'm an anti labelite I don't like labels either, so mm -hmm. thank you so much. Thank you, gentlemen. Appreciate the time. Thank you, Fred. appreciate that. State Representative Fred now, Keller. Fred is my representative. Look get at back this. to work, Fred. <laughs> okay, well, I'll, I'll, quit, I'll quit shooting the breeze here with uh, you. Yeah, right? get out of here. No, I think <laughs> this is important. <laughs> thank you very service. much, Fred. Thank and you. Yeah, this is extremely important. All right, we got open phones now. 1-800-795-9565. That's a 1-800-795-9565. We will be right back. This summer, the world is depending on us. Timing is everything. I'm putting together a team. The clock is ticking. Cool. I'll drive. The adventure begins. Okay, guys, let's go to work. The Ford Summer Spectacular. We're going to have to be faster, smarter, tougher than ever before. Onboard GPS shows a tunnel two clicks south. Take a ride into the future. Well, we've got hybrids, so let's just see who runs out of gas first. Ready to save the world? The Ford Summer Spectacular sales event. We're just getting started. Now playing at Ford dealers everywhere. Now lease a Ford Focus for $1.99 a month with no money down, no first month's payment, and no cash due at signing. That's a new Focus for just $1.99 a month with no money down, no first month's payment, and no cash due at signing. Just call 1-800-NEXT-FORD for all the details. Hurry to your Quality Plus Ford store. Now is the time to go to your Kubota dealer and get a brand new Kubota M-Series tractor during Kubota's Gear Up and Go sales event. If you're thinking about a rugged utility tractor and the year-round comfort of a grand X-Cab, then a new Kubota has your name on it. With a smooth-running diesel engine and IntelliShift transmission, your Kubota dealer is the place to start. Right now, get your own Kubota M-Series tractor for zero down and 0% financing for up to 60 months. So for a great deal, think orange at the Kubota Gear Up and Go sales event. For more information or to find a participating dealer, go to Kubota.com. Zero down, 0% zero APR financing for terms up to 60 months on selected equipment now through September 30th, 2014. Not available for rental national accounts or government customers. 0% APR low rate financing not available with instant rebate offers. Financing available through Kubota Credit Corporation USA subject to credit approval. Other exceptions may apply. For more information, call toll-free 1-888-465-8268. 
See the news with News Radio 1070 WKOK's YouTube channel. Subscribe to WKOK's YouTube channel today and we'll let you know when we post a new video. Now you can see breaking news. Watch WKOK's feature stories and see our live telephone talk show on the mark. Visit WKOK.com or search WKOK on YouTube from your computer, tablet, or mobile device to subscribe today. It's the News Radio 1070 WKOK YouTube channel. Subscribe today with our link at WKOK.com. Welcome back to the KOK Live Telephone <laughs> Talk Show Open Phones. Well, I got the beat in me. It sounds wonderful. Kevin Hurt, yeah. greatest engineer the world has ever known, selector of ultra, ultra, ultra appropriate That's a head music. bobbing. That's a head bombing bit of music. Promised we would say it, and I will. The uh, great actress Lauren Bacall died, age of 89, uh, yesterday. She started acting when she was a teenager. And, of course, you watched her grow up from th- from a pup to uh, well, all Well, she was in roles. the 30s and 40s, and I wasn't around till the 40s. Uh, but she was 19, I believe, when she was in her first movie. And uh, with, uh, what's his name, the uh, uh, Victor Humphrey Bogart. Bogart. I was going to say Victor Bogart. No, uh, Humphrey Bogart, and uh, I believe. I was listening this morning. I've never been much of a movie fan. I do enjoy listening to Movie Mike uh, when he's on in the morning, by the way, because I learn about movies. But never been a big movie fan, but I had certainly recognized the names. And, of course, the even bigger news because he wasn't as old as this fine actress was, is Robin Williams' death. Uh, That's one of the sad ones. And, uh, well, they're all sad, of course. But uh, obviously a very conflicted person. And with all the resources that you can imagine to help himself, uh, uh, limitless money, limitless friends, and it just sometimes doesn't work, and it's very tragic. Sam Mitchell is my co-host. I'm the subpar host of the show, never intending to demean or call anyone an idiot, but, of course, one of our regular listeners says that's the tone or the uh, sort of the net effect of uh, what I've done. Well, I so. think he was calling you an idiot is what I think it was. It was an implication that uh, if you don't I agree with somebody it. and you say, uh, well, no, I mean, around the bend, that's what he was mm-hmm. saying. Okay. Uh, Buzz, you are on the mark. Thanks for calling in. Hi, Buzz. Hi, guys. Just quickly, I, as one of the last people in the world to admit texting is a good thing, I just wanted to send out a thank you to you guys for that service you provide. Uh, this week alone, it has saved me a lot of uh, lost time in driving because the text alerts allow me to uh, avoid potential problems. Uh, I wonder, does that text work both ways? In other words, if I come on something, can I text that? back to that account, or do I still have to call the news line? At at this point, no. It is a uh, one-way outgoing only. Unlike the email alerts that you can reply to. Yeah, well, I don't have a smartphone. I have a dumb phone. Uh, But it's smart enough to get the text that you need. That's good. It is. And again, I'm embarrassed to admit how much help that has been to me. But again, I was, you know, I know occasionally there are times when you guys just don't have anybody to answer the news line. And uh, I wondered if I could send messages back via that. Well, maybe someday. Oh, yeah. I'll bet all of this stuff is awfully new in this business, as I am awfully yeah. old in this business. And the business is starting to catch up with technology, this radio yeah. station being right on top of that uh, in the state, certainly I'm are. sure. Yeah. Certainly are. Well, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you, Buzz. Thank, thank you. Being, uh, he's Bye. talking about uh, WKOK Text Connect, uh, which is an opportunity for you to sign up. You give us your cell phone or pager number, and then when there's breaking news, weather alerts, so we send a quick text message to you. If uh, we try to put enough information in the first sentence, that'll give you the information like there's an accident at X location, and that you can avoid that. And then there's a link. You click there if you have a smartphone, and you can click there, or you can just turn on the radio and hear the rest of the story. Could I go back to our discussion uh, with uh, Fred Keller, our, my representative? You're obsessed with these pensions, aren't you? Uh, uh, no, no. I want to go back to opinion programs oh, okay. and politicians. One of the things that I think you do, Mark, I have done all my life, and politicians do particularly, is put ourselves up in public and expect 
for people to throw tomatoes at us. It's not unusual to be criticized when you and I sit here and have opinions. The opinions will be contrary to many people's opinions, and they think that we're idiots and we think they're idiots and uh, back and forth. It's what the program is all about. And I feel, Mark, if you get criticized, that's just exactly what you asked for by taking this job. But I also think Fred Keller, if you criticize him, uh, it's exactly what he asked for when he took that job. He knew everybody wasn't going to agree with him. By the way, I think Fred's very honest about it. He's, he's not put off by what you have said about him. He confronted you in a very respectful way. Well, and I think I could easily check myself here and say, oh, it, does Fred do his job poorly? You know, overall, I think the answer is no. I think at the time I was thinking, and whether I ever verbalized it or their true context is that or not, but I was thinking this idea that if you take your personal, religious, or your own personal viewpoints and you impose them on either your decision-making, your voting, or even the discussions that you're having, that's not ideal for a state representative, in my opinion. But if, obviously, he got elected saying, I'm going to do what I'm going to do, and when I get there, I'm going to do that. And his constituents said, go, go, go. And so here we are. So that's fine. So uh, again, uh, if I say he's doing a poor job, that's why. But he's doing an excellent job in every single other way. And I certainly think the fact that he comes on the show and is willing to talk about it sets him apart. I mean, you don't see Linda Schlegel-Culver over there. You don't see every once in a while you'll see Garth Everett or you'll see uh, Kurt Mosser over there. But uh, Fred loves to, uh, he's done this a couple times on the show, is bring up things that he hears and make sure that we hash them out and that all sides get a chance to talk. And I think it's very interesting. I, I find it to be... Uh, I find that it is uh, very interesting most of the time. Now, I, I Kevin think wants to change the subject. Well, just briefly, I, I gave some incorrect information, so I want to. I fact checked myself. I just recorded that. Yes. Uh, Kevin gave incorrect <laughs> information. <laughs> See, that's the beauty of having control of it. Uh, you'll never hear that again. Uh, okay. I fact checked myself, and you can, if you are a WKOK Tax Connect member, you can text the newsroom at seven zero two three six. Or just hit reply on your phone. Well, if you see news happening and you're a WKOK Tax Connect member, you can text us at 70236. Yeah, so don't another hit reply reason. if somebody else was the last person to text you. <laughs> so another reason why you should be a WKOK Tax Connect member. Like if somebody sends you a note and says, how many hoagies did you eat for lunch? Do not reply 70236. However, we have received a few of those messages, oh, I think. Yeah, you, you have to check this out. Then This was activated not all that long ago, and people have replied to Text Connect with words like, grab a quart of milk, honey. <laughs> <laughs> or, um, you know, I have not signed up for Text Connect, and I'm going to do that. I'm going to find out today how to do that exactly. Go to WKOK.com, and you can select what Text Connect messages you would like. Maybe you don't want sports. Then don't check that. Maybe you just want weather and traffic. Check those. Maybe you just want sports. And no junk, no ads, no encouragement to do anything other than uh, receive what you signed up for, and that's important information. We don't send you a note and say... Um, grab a quart of milk for the radio station, honey. Okay, <laughs> if you do, I'll disregard it. I do have uh, your the email uh, alerts the, uh, from oh. WKOK, so and it all works well. I'm an old-fashioned guy. Emails. Take a quick break here in a moment. Our webcam is up and running. In case you didn't know, if you'd like to watch the show, as uh, dozens of people do now, watch the program. Kevin's the producer of that. Make sure that the images reflect uh, that which is being talked about on the crystal clear audio stream. Go to WKOK.com or click on our YouTube and watch the archive on the mark brought to you by the Sunbury Motor Company. Family-owned dealership since 1915 4th Street, Sunbury, and Routes 11 and 15 in beautiful Hummel's Wharf. While looking for a vehicle, you know that if it sounds too good to be true, chances are it is too good to be true. You get the runaround, got to go from place to place. Well, you can just skip all of that and go straight to Sunbury Motor Company. Sunbury Motor Company has been satisfying more customers and selling more cars since 1915, so you know they've got it right. No offers that look good on paper or online, and then you get disappointed when you see them in person. Sunbury Motor Company offers a lineup few other auto dealers in the area can compete with. With the inventory 
inventory of Ford, Hyundai, Kia, and Lincoln vehicles, there will be no problem finding the right vehicle that fits your needs and your budget. And the friendly, knowledgeable staff's ready and able to help you with everything from the test drive to the drive off the lot. See for yourself at Sunbury Motors. Sunbury Motors, Ford, Lincoln, Hyundai, in the North 4th Street Auto Plaza, Sunbury, and Sunbury Motors, Kia, Routes 11 and 15, Hummel's Wharf. Look for them online anytime at sunburymotors.com. This is Tanya Diddy. If you've been wondering how you can save money and the environment for the future, then all you have to do is look to the sun. Let Lenape Solar enlighten you. Lenape Solar installs residential and commercial solar systems, each custom designed to meet your individual needs. And we're committed to buy American products. Making an investment in a solar system today is much more affordable than it was two to three years ago. The payback is much quicker. You can trust the experts at Lenape Solar to help enlighten you to a brighter tomorrow because we're committed to you and to our community. Call us at 286-1496 and start saving today. Susquehanna Valley Country Club has announced their 2015 new member due schedule. Enroll by August 31st and become a member immediately. All you need to pay monthly is your food and beverage minimum through this December. Your dues begin January 2015. Dues rates are as low as $25 per month for a social membership and $100 per month for golf memberships. Find out online how you can win a new driver, putter, or a $100 food certificate to their grill room at the end of the month. Be part of the new Susquehanna Valley Country Club. Visit golfsvcc.com or call 570-743-1714 for an appointment. You know you're not supposed to drink and drive. You know you shouldn't talk on the phone, and worse yet, text and drive. But for some reason, you still do it. Are you impressing your friends? Maybe you just think you're being cool. But if you do get into a deadly accident, you impress no one when you're dead. Say no to distracted driving. Bet you your family and friends will think you're cool. This message brought to you by the stations of Sunbury Broadcasting Corporation, including News Radio 1070 WKOK and Sealance Grove Ford. Proud supporters of Susquehanna Smart Drive. <laughs> All righty, welcome back to WKOK Live Telephone Talk Show. We were talking about Text Connect. Uh, we got a note that says, how can I sign up? Well, you go to WKOK.com. On the right-hand side, you see all the choices. You can sign up for email alerts that go to your to your well, your smartphone or your email account. And there's again, no ads, uh, just an opportunity. There is a sponsor, Evangelical Community Hospital, but that's just a simple mention. And uh, but important weather information, breaking news. Um, what else? That's about it, really. That's how I found out about uh, Robin Williams passing. From a WKOK text connector yes. or, or email alert, I'm talking Actually, about. Actually, I found out that, too. I was with somebody else. They got a text, and they held it up in front of me and said, look at here. Mm-hmm. And my my brother uh, had the opportunity many, many years ago to uh, sit at a table with Robin Williams at, at lunch and several other people in on the West Coast. And my brother said... Robin Williams is exactly as you see him on television or anywhere else. He's always on. He never stops being an actor. And uh, that's that's part of his uh, allure, I think, over the years was he uh, he was very honest about what he did. 1-800-795-9565 is our telephone number. Let me scroll down here and uh, say related. This is from one of the smartest women in the world. says, as much as it pains me, I have to agree with Fred and Joe. A candidate should lay out his or her position on major issues before the election, and we, the voters, should choose who we want to send to Harrisburg or Washington. If we don't like the way they vote, we can elect someone else two years later. I don't think one can separate their own personal views from their political views. One of our local reps pretends that she doesn't have a position on an issue and then votes the same way as her Republican vo- bosses on every vote. She said, I wonder who she is. Yeah, I, I wouldn't have any idea who she is. I, I like her a lot, but she does do that. Thank you, Melissa. Very well stated. I very much appreciate that. Yeah, that'll be another sentence that'll be brought up when we talk about this. Hopefully in about two weeks or so, we'll bring in Joe Kantz, the Snyder County Commissioner, who called in a very much uh, faith-oriented individual who allows uh, that to uh, inform his uh, decision-making. And Fred Keller. And... And I'd like he, to be here. Yeah. All of it emanating from a remark I made that I thought Fred Keller did his job poorly, which I will gladly admit is a gross overstatement. Did you shepherd Smith something? Yes. You pulled a shepherd, didn't you? <laughs> yes, Fred. <laughs> yes, I did. I did. I, shep- I shepherded it. Yes, I, I said something designed to be inflammatory, and guess what? It, it was worked. inflammatory. <laughs> it worked. <laughs> all right. 
Sammy, thank you so much for calling in. You are on the mark. Oh, before you talk, Sammy, 1-800-795-9565. Yes. Go ahead. This is the always popular Sammy. I've got <laughs> a lot of fans out there, they tell me. Really? Yeah, you do. I think you're you probably do. right. What's, what's on your fanny mind this morning? Uh, a simple question. i got to go to the, the uh, U.S. Supreme Court. And the other question is, I just want a list of lawyers who are, are attorneys who can practice before the U.S. Supreme Court. Is this a rerun? I've tried all the county bar associations. I've tried some law schools, and no one seems to. I went up to Dickinson. We, we've they had said, this discussion. Wait, Sammy, have- Sammy, Sammy. We've had this conversation before on the air. We, we don't have that kind of information for you. You have to, like, you're going to have to go to an attorney. Or go to Washington and ask around. What's yeah, we, we don't have a list of those things, Sammy. We can't really well, help maybe, you. Maybe someone in your audience has a list, can tell me how to proceed. We, okay? We've done that before, too, and oh, I haven't heard any a response. A list with a phone number, that's all. I'm in the 411. Audience. I'm in the audience. Oh, I just told you to check in Washington. Stop being silly. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm yeah, being serious. 411, that's the number to call. All right, what else is on your mind, Sammy? What else is cooking? Sammy's gone. Well, you know, the thing is, uh, uh, if lawyers anywhere don't take a case, sometimes it means you don't have a case. (laughs) And, you know, it's just a possibility. I'm not saying Sammy doesn't, but a lawyer probably will take the case if they think they can win. All right, 1-800-795-9565. We have five more minutes of open phones. We invite folks to check in. Uh, We were talking about pensions. Some common sense solutions are being talked about. Uh, One of the things Fred Keller indicated is that he is not supportive or really talking about anything that would uh, hurt any benefits for existing employees or those already retired. So we're just going to have to keep paying for those because of some poor discussion. So we have State Representative Garth Everett on the line. Good morning, Garth. Thanks for checking in. Good morning. Yeah, I was just driving by my way to Harrisburg and was listening to your discussion with uh, with my colleague Fred Keller and uh, your discussion. And thought it was uh, it was very interesting. What is a and, state uh, representative? I, so, well, go ahead. Go ahead with what with the reason you called, and then you can answer my question. Well, I just thought you know, there's you're you're correct uh, in that you know everybody brings to their job you know their own personal experiences, uh, their beliefs, and. Uh, you know, some people like to uh, like to talk about those, and uh, some people like to listen and make their decisions. And uh, you know, when I was when I was younger, I used to think I was uh, correct on just about every issue that there is. And you know, as I've matured a little bit, uh, I like to do a little more listening, and you know, I'll put my opinion forth. But I don't think that, uh, that my opinion's the you know the final word on anything. And I think that's the balance that state representatives have to find is uh, is you know, representing what they think the core values of their constituents are, uh, their core values, and uh, and what's what's good for the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. Sometimes. And what should a state representative do? How much of your personal opinions uh, should you uh, infuse into the discussions and votes? And how much of your constituents' opinions should you infuse in the discussions and votes? Well, I, I, again, I think it's uh, not to try to get off the hook, but I think it's a balance that you need to find. You know, if we were just going to, uh, if we, we could just, you know, we could do legislation by polling if we wanted to, or by, you know, we, we have a representative democracy, and, and we elect representatives, and they explain who they are before they go to uh, Harrisburg or Washington. And uh, I think our job is to give a clear idea of what our core values are so people know who they're voting for. And then, I mean, you need to take... The uh, the uh, opinions and uh, the values of your constituents down there, but sometimes you need to do what you feel is right and come back and explain that to your constituents. And uh, and you know as you've been saying, you know nobody agrees, uh, you know with uh, with anybody if you've been on a board, if you're married, if you have in any kind of situation, you know nobody agrees on everything. And I think the important part is to have, and I think that you're having that with uh, Representative Keller you know, is an honest and open discussion about these issues. And then, uh, you know, people are going to understand where the elected representatives stand on things. Uh, as you just stated, we're, our, our contracts get renewed every two years. If, uh, if our values are too far from our uh, electorate, that, uh, that contract can be, uh, 
not renewed, and you can send somebody else down there. Well, you're absolutely right. You are right on some issues, and you are wrong on some others. So <laughs> we'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll talk about all of them when you come back and visit us again sometime. Sure, sure. Thank thanks you for so having much. me on for just a couple minutes, and I hope uh, you all have a, a good day and good rest of the week. Do come back and visit us. Thank 80, you, Representative. 84th District State Representative uh, Garth Everett, in and around, uh, although excluding Williamsport as his district. Yeah, uh, uh, it, that's an interesting discussion that you have brought up. You and Fred have brought up. Now, what the heck are these guys supposed to be doing? And I have, now, when Fred ran, I, I admit that I did not vote for Fred. But I think Fred represents his district as he should. Now, I disagree with him in some places, and sometimes I might say, Fred, I wish you'd listen to the minority a little more. But he represents his district well. Even though I disagree with him, I think I'd vote for him next time around, even though I'm a Democrat, because Fred does represent the area. I might vote against him to show him that there are people who disagree. So, you know, my vote, it all depends on what happens the day that I walk into the booth. I do think he uh, is doing what he said he should do, and I just disagree with some of his stuff. I perhaps would like to replace him, but with whom? And would I agree with everything they think? One Doubt our, it. One of our listeners sends us a note that says, if you want to see someone in radio doing poor constituent service and doing their job poorly, please go to the nearest mirror. <laughs> <laughs> I guess this is meant for you. <laughs> no, I, I must be. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin, maybe I, it doesn't specifically say who it's for, but they did text it to my phone. So, <laughs> all right. Well, thank you so much for coming in. Well, thank you for having me. And always enjoy talking with Fred. Always enjoy talking with you. And sometimes I can even put up with Kevin over there. Kevin, you do a nice job over there. I'm just waiting for the other shoe to drop. Well, it, <laughs> it ain't going to drop. I truly yeah. mean it. I think you do a great job the, over there. The message there. thing says there, whoever sent that to me is still texting. It says still typing. So there, there's a follow-up. There's a follow-up coming. All right. Oh, here we go. If you would like to see an idiot in the mirror, please go to the nearest mirror mark and then say, hey, Kevin, come here so you can see you both. <laughs> <laughs> I see it every morning, and every morning I get more and more impressed with myself. Yeah, re <laughs> reflect on that, boys and girls. We gotta screen these texts before we read them on the air. See you next week on Wednesday. Oh wait, I'll be in on Friday. Right, you're coming in. Friday. Yep, and Ben will be here, and we'll talk about. I know he wants to bring up income inequality. All right, thank you. Dan Patrick is next on the WDKOK, continuing to talk about uh, all things Hollywood and uh, sports, and Steve Jones will do the same this afternoon. This is WDKOK Sunbury.